tribute magazine. Sorry to ask forgiveness. Yeah, I was just the there in April, by the way. They still have the Hollywood House box. Ready? I was just there in April. Wow. In that location. <laughs> so fantastic. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Hi there. Okay. Man. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you, Andy. And save. Save. Ready? I'm way ready. Set. There we go. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Are we live? We're live, and let, let me check the audio level. We don't. We only have two viewers, so we don't have to. People are coming in. It's going to take a minute, but the show is actually starting officially. Whoa! This is this is Torn Tuesday, but I yes, feel like we sh we should start calling it the Hobbit Show or Tolkien Tuesdays or something. How about we have some very talented people who want to help us do this interesting new uh, um, opening theme bit that really? we're going to do? Yeah, your your big idea. Okay. It's a great idea, and <laughs> we've got some we've got some Tony Award winning uh, singers, uh, seriously, who want to uh, come on board and provide their talent. Ooh, that'd be wonderful. We need to get in touch with our friends at Folk Manus Puppets, who create the puppets used on the Craig Ferguson Late Late Show. Yeah. And we need to get some Ooh, really great, great Class A puppets fabricated for our little stunt that we're going to pull. <laughs> so. But who's going to pay for it all? Oh, and you we, did get you did we, get the images that I sent you. We we uh, we love. Uh, uh, nobody gets paid because we're a volunteer website. Uh, may we remind you yet again, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you have joined us at theonering.net. This is the central website for forged by the fans and for the fans of J.R.R. Tolkien. All volunteer community website, bringing you the latest news and gossip and information about the Hobbit, which is about to hit theaters in mm, two months. Ooh. Oof. Yeah, so here's Justin. We're close. I'm Cliff, Quick Beam on the OneRing.net, and this is Torn Tuesdays. Welcome back to our show. And uh, hope, uh, maybe we would start calling it Tolkien Tuesdays or The Hobbit Show because it's, Ooh, that's yeah. more appropriate. And you can find us at two places. You can find us at the OneRing.net slash live. And there yes. we have a wonderful IRC chat where hundreds of people are chatting uh, already, constantly, nonstop from around the world. And then there's a little video embed so you can watch us at the same time and follow along or if you've got a webcam turn it on and go to stickam.com slash the one ring net and uh we'd love to see your ooh. pretty face ooh so. look at this do you see this oh look at what we did on look what we would have did our facebook page just changed our cover to include john Rhys davies craig parker and the estimable billy boyd at that wonderful dragon con thing that we just did in September. Did you see how we changed the cover? Did you do that? No. Because it looks great. It's a Larry Curtis photo. He was and the moderator. Larry, Larry took the photo, so that's very all Larry. discreetly taking that camera to the side of the table. So While he cool. was hosting the panel. Yeah, and they didn't even know, and it's such a candid, candid shot of the stars. And, uh, it, you know, it used to be, uh, you know, why, why would anyone take a picture of the people you're moderating on stage? But, you know, at Comic-Con when we saw... Uh, our friend Chris Hardwick taking pictures, and Peter Jackson taking pictures uh, oh, from the t from, from the stage. It's like, okay, yes. if those guys can do it, we can do it. We're gonna yeah, do it. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, look, here's here's our Barlaman's chat room, the central place to be for live IRC supported chat. Everybody, remember IRC bantering. folks. Oh God, the, one of the original '90s waves of technology oh, that has man. stayed with us. I, I, I remember when we started streaming live and it, for the Star Wars lines. And uh, IRC was the only way to chat because there was no integrated chat flash video thing. <laughs> no, so, not like that. Uh, uh, so but then AOL came along. Yep. Somehow America Online revolutionized the idea of random chatting with random strangers. It was way before chat roulette showed up. Way hi, before. Hi, Tar. Oh, is that hi, Tar Mario? Well, I haven't seen Hipsky you in a long just time. just left. Stargate Geek. Xanaseb, hello. Hey, hello. Xanaseb is there, too. And Pete is just There's off in Pete. his own world, I, take, you know, doing his thing. I love that guy, Pete. He's great. So, so He bumped into all of our friends at the recent New York Comic Con. I, so we were he at did. Comic Con this yes. past weekend, and how many of you went to the Javits Center right there in Manhattan on the east side of mm -hmm. Manhattan for mm -hmm. New York Comic Con? It was... Uh, Don't mind me. I'm tweeting to the universe about our show it was, it was quite wonderful just now uh, 
uh, we had a just uh, uh, the, the the panel on Friday night, uh-huh. which originally we thought nine to ten p.m. It's which too late. It, it was, it's too late. No, really? Jeez, was it, it was, crowded? It was crowded. I mean, it, look, Pete is wearing our new New York Comic Con exclusive T-shirt. Oh, is that our new shirt design? Yeah. I haven't even seen the, that the, yet. The, the dwarves. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. That's cool, the, dwarves. For, for baseball season. And it looks with, like the baseball Dodgers. Yeah. Emblem. So how okay, that's cool. That's very cool. What uh, uh, Justin is not allowed in my world. That's right. That's right. Only dwarves are. So dwarves. We and uh, it, it was uh, such a wonderful design uh, that we did here at the One Ring, and and we kept it under wraps. We didn't want any pictures posted. We you didn't, didn't even any, show me. It, we didn't let anybody know because you knew I would blab about it live. And, and so we you know went, I would. So the shirts showed up at, at <laughs> New York Comic Con, and and uh, how did they sell? I, Pete, you were there. I mean, how, how did they sell? Um, it, not at takeoff, but the inspired. And uh, inspired by yes, an homage to. The Yankees. Yes. That's really great. So I didn't say Dodgers, did I? Um, no, I accidentally must have said New York. This is the official. I better have so, said Yankees. God forbid they'll you know, never not, forgive me. Over not that. only did we have a brand new shirt that was only available at the convention, we're not we're not going to sell it online. Um, but you can. This came out in stores. <laughs> actually, in Barnes and Noble. I'm just tweeting about that. And Barnes and Noble and and Walmart. Are the has. the only two retailers in North America that have it? And everybody that has been hitting us up on Twitter and Facebook and on our message board saying uh, they only got three copies in. It's in the magazine section. Well, I, wait, periodically. Wait, when I went to Barnes and Noble, they had a stack of a dozen copies. So they uh, had a dozen. Well, so I grabbed one. This is Los Angeles. Yeah, so that's true. Of, of course, uh, you know we're, we're gonna have more, but uh, it should be in. Uh, it should be everywhere. So we're we're gonna go through this magazine and give you some sneak previews of of what what's inside and this is limited edition this is th- this will be a collector's thing collector's item because, well i mean it, it says collector's edition up it in the does corner, but, indeed, but look at look at what i've already done to the spine of it i've already ruined the spine of it because i've handed it to so many friends i pressed the magazine open to put it on my scanner and i scanned some images for you guys we've got some inside pages to show you the glorious content of this magazine created entirely by the one ring.net all the staff volunteer writers at the fan website put this together with the help of our friends at topics media lab who uh, put out these special tribute magazines related to big fan friends and bieber fans be bigger than the lord of the rings fans that is uh, such a skewed like scru- skewed just, skewed justin list. bieber fans are skewed. definitely more Ridiculous. more loud than than the Hobbit fans right now, but I have a feeling that after this movie comes out in December, that 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 list is irrelevant. They say it's frozen on them so now. Oh no! Is it back? The, okay, good. But uh, you know, Vulture.com uh, did this did, did this list of top 25 fan franchises, and of course, Star Wars is near the head of the pack. I thought Star Wars would be at the head of the pack, but no, they put Game of Thrones, which I think is a paid placement. Uh, uh-huh. I, I don't know yeah. what else it could be, well, but because uh, the, all the other ones, like I understand, I understand Justin Bieber, and I understand Twilight, although I think Twilight is waning now. It better be. It's over. Is well, it over? it's almost over. There's one more movie. Ugh. I know, but then that's it, and then it will go away finally. Borders does not exist anymore. Theater, Sorry, Theater Nation. No more Borders. Borders does not exist. But you know, you know what's interesting, the. Uh, the limit, the limited availability of this magazine means you can only go to, unfortunately, the Walmart and the Barnes and Noble. That's it. So, if you want to get this special copy, it cannot be ordered online. I see no. a lot of people asking, "Can we order it online?" No, no, you have to physically go to a brick and mortar retail store, and, and the way that we used to do in the old days. And the, one of the reasons is it's a very, it's a limited. It's a one-time only. This isn't like an ongoing periodical. This is this is That's a right. one-time only thing. And it contains and no advertisements except for two. Right. There's two ads. So there, th- this isn't like you know 20 pages of ads before the table of contents. So. Mm-hmm. That's um, right. It's not supported by any m- marketing. That's why it's a 7.99 issue, single issue, no other so you know, commercials. Love, in and, it. and you know, it'd be interesting to see how how well this does. I think the publisher oh. is looking to see how well this does and. And uh, uh, to go from there, 
Um, but well, I've been hearing reports online that everyone has run to the stores to buy it, and there's only a couple left. Yeah. Or or less. Now here. Here in LA, even though we had dozens of copies available, right. we bought a big bulk amount of them and we only left a few left because we have staff all around the country and around the world who are asking for copies. So we're getting some in LA and then sending them to our friends who are in, uh, you know, uh, in uh, New Zealand and other countries around the world and so they can actually get a, their hands on it. What, what I sent you 20 or 22 different images yeah, from inside this so, magazine. Yeah, we've got we've got uh, we've got the uh, p uh, pictures. Oh yeah. Oh. Scanned from inside the magazine. Oh, and there's a bunch more that I sent you too, besides just these. And I, I decided to <laughs> flip so number three upside cover. right. <laughs> that's the, that's the cover, as you can see in the top right corner. It's it's uh, the collector's edition. Um, but behind the scenes spy photos. Uh, were those sourced from from yours and Larry's uh, adventures? Or, or spy did photos other spies... Other um, fans sent those spy photos to us. Other people were doing flyovers. Really? Actual, some, and, and you know what? They're, they're a sheep farm. They don't have, like, you know, DEFCON 3 security to keep the flyovers. These airplanes are coming really low over the outdoor set. Those spy photos were sent in. We posted stories about them on the OneRing.net. They're not available in Canada, unfortunately. I think it's only available in the U.S., so that's so why I think it's going to be collector's yeah. item. Yeah, so sorry to I mean, say that. Uh, there aren't a lot of things that, that the OneRing.net uh, logo is, is on in stores. So this uh -huh. is, it, you know, it's, a, it's a wonderful This is really great. Wonderful magazine. Here, I mean, here's the, the, the Topics Media Lab and, and uh, Table of Contents. Mm -hmm. um, Those are our friends who said... We are ready to put out a Hobbit tribute magazine. There's no one else that we can go to except you guys. And here's the tribute. We wrote this to tell you guys this wasn't about making any money because the OneRing.net is not making any money off of this. This is just a tribute to our experience within the grassroots fandom. And the tribute that you can see right here is to tell you that this is about you guys. Tolkien wrote some of the most inspiring novels of all time. The Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit and I would also say the Silmarillion, have inspired television specials, movies, musicals, and now this magazine. But this isn't a book about The Hobbit, although there's plenty of coverage of Peter Jackson's upcoming films. This is about you, the fans. The OneRing.net has covered all things Tolkien for more than 10 years. About 11 now, actually. And it was forged for the fans, by the fans. This tribute magazine is created in that spirit. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> there's our logo upside down. I, you know, I, I recorrected that and sent it back to you with upside right. And th here's a side by side look at uh, um, uh, the first character profiles that appear in the very front of the magazine. Yeah, Gandalf and Bilbo have this, and, and, and Thorin have a big two page spread. And then the rest of uh, re the rest of the, the rest of the gang. It's called the rest of the company, and that's a two page spread where we see. Ah, a little paragraph mentioning character profiles of all the other 13 dwarves. And look at this interesting sidebar. I know our friend, our friend wrote this sidebar about sexy dwarves. <laughs> it is, has been the subject of conversation since July, since Comic-Con. And um, one of our staff members took it upon herself to write down this fascinating explanation Pete, what, what are you saying about professional looking? You're saying the One Ring is not professional looking? It's, uh, it, you know, we, we try to take pride in what we're doing. But, uh, yes, it is. Th I mean, this is an it official it magazine. Is a, it this is a it, professional this looking. Isn't it is a real professional magazine company. You know what she says here? There's something to be said for a short man with a hot temper. The girls are getting themselves all in a fluster over Keely and Feely, Dino Gorman and Aiden Turner coming on the screen to be this hot oh look why do they put oin in the sexy dwarves column well no 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 is is this this is just a big con big list of everyone the sidebar is just yeah, about yeah but the sidebar has sexy dwarves and then they say ori feely that Nori, that's it's and not and then that oin. doesn't that no well maybe this is a bad layout decision from the editors yeah. because look see they're laid out across both pages the second page is not about just them so there is it's, it's no shortage of smolder. Yeah, oh Richard Richard goodness. Armitage. 
Here's what she says. Oh my goodness. Richard Armitage as Thorin is the breakout heartthrob of the series with his baritone singing voice and piercing gaze throwing female audiences into a tizzy. Ooh. It's safe to say this dwarf would have no trouble finding someone to join him on an adventure. Whoa. Whoa. That's almost salacious. What? Almost salacious. The new faces. And then after, oh, we, yeah. after we explore the company of dwarves, look at these other new characters who have arrived. Ooh, Sylvester McCoy. You guys, check him out. The ultimate Radagast. Couldn't be another actor who could do what this guy's doing he, with this role. He looks the part, I think, and I think his persona, personally, uh, fits uh, what, uh -huh. little, what zero I know about Radagast. I mean, it's just, it, he, he, seems, he seems right. He does. Well, you know, here's, and here's, wait, before we go on to, look at this. Our friend, Larry Curtis, wrote this, this is a great opening. To science fiction fans, especially those who favor Doctor Who, Sylvester McCoy hardly needs an introduction. That's true. That's true. And he's like a colleague of previously established sages, Christopher Lee, Saruman the White, and Ian McKellen's Gandalf the Grey. Radagast is barely mentioned at all in The Hobbit, written by Tolkien, and his role in the trilogy of films remains something of a mystery. And we're about to learn. We're two months away from learning of how much of this new character is really robust in the film when he's not mentioned in the pages of The Hobbit. He, he isn't. He's absolutely so do you not think mentioned. He, do you think he only has a role in the first movie? He has a big role in all three movies. In all three movies. Oh yes. Okay, so oh, yeah. Radagast the Brown is is, is going to steal the show. This look in at this all guy. three movies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I He's going to totally steal be, the show. Be in Are this. you kidding? Are we going to see a serious Billy Connolly? Well, not <laughs> as serious as he was in Boondock Saints. I don't. Oh no, nothing. But but, but that shows that he he can play serious and uh, angry and I want to kill everybody. Yeah. Because that's yeah. what the character Billy Connolly's character he wants to. He is a to. battle warlord. A dwarf warlord. A dwarf warlord. Riding into battle on the, on the side of a giant boar. And he's going to bear down on the goblins and smite his enemy upon the mountainside. So, that, that, I, I can't wait for Billy Connolly. Uh, you know, to answer exactly uh, some of your questions uh, in the chat room here, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Numenor and, every, and Pete and everybody, um, that we got, we're going through all the t-shirt prizes uh, this week. From the road trip to uh, Dragon Con. Oh, and so prizes we, are out, going to be out soon. Uh, you know, it turns out all of the when you uh, donated through GoFundMe.com, which was wonderful and exciting, um, uh, we got uh, your zip code, uh, but we didn't get your full mailing address. So there's a uh, we're sending out a message tomorrow uh, to everybody on the list saying please send me back your mailing actual postal address so we can send those out. Um, so we just were able to download the Excel file, and it only had everybody's zip code. So sorry it's taken so long, but um, we're getting there. Oh, thank you. The new faces includes in the, the Hobbit. The first two big new elves. You want new elves? Here's your premiere look at the two newest elf characters here in the Peter Jackson Cinematic Universe. One of them is a new character invented by Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh. Mm -hmm. And another one she's is... The, she is the head of the Elf Guard. She's the head of the armed forces protecting the Elf King's gates there in Mirkwood Forest. That's her role. She's a military leader. And evidently, that's Lee Pace right there in the lower inset. The very tall... Dark and handsome. And again, Lee Pace. Uh, for those that just missed it, Pipske is saying, uh, uh, "How did how do you get this magazine? This magazine is only available in stores, in person at Barnes and Noble and Walmart, uh, in a limited limited uh, cover. You won't find it on Amazon, and you won't find it online at their websites either. So uh, I'd say uh, check Walmart and, yep. and um, look at Walmart and Barnes so and Noble. That's Evangeline Lilly is an interesting uh, addition because." Uh, she, of course, was in Lost. Big time. The bi she was one of the main, 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 main people on Lost. And you know who else was in the lo in, in Lost? Mr. Dominic Monaghan, who, who plays Mariadoc Brandybuck. So, so and there is your continuation. There's your, you know, six degrees of wait. Oh, but it goes deeper. They dated. 
they had quite the relationship. They dated? Oh, yeah. Wait, in the movie or in the show? or In like real in, life. In real life. In real life. Come on. When this I was is, this, is, this could be awkward. When I was visiting the, the set of The Hobbit in April of this year, Evangeline and I had a funny talk about that. Really? Because I said, yeah, I hired Dominic Monaghan to be our narrator for Ringer's Lord of the Fans. And she looked at me and said, <laughs> you know I dated him, don't you? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I, I wasn't going to bring it up because I know that's ancient history to some people. And right. she rolled her eyes and said, oh, God, we'll sit down and have a talk about that someday. <laughs> that's what Evangeline Lilly said to me. She's the funniest and sweetest girl. And I know a lot of people are getting tripped out because she's an invented character. But, hey... I'm down for that because... There are no women in The Hobbit book. There are no women, uh, and there won't be anything but Galadriel floating around the room. And she wasn't even in the book. And, and her, but, but Galadriel's going to have a markedly increased presence when uh, something something happens at Dol Guldur. I'm suspicious. I don't know for sure, but I expect we're going to see uh, Galadriel involved we are paying, somehow. We are paying attention, Stargate Geek, but uh, we, we're, we're just kind of going through the magazine. Uh, 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 Please send it, me a copy on Xanaseb in the UK, or at least... Well, hello, Stargate Geek. Well, um, well, well uh, post your full mailing address and social security number in the chat room, and, and maybe we'll uh, <laughs> maybe we can figure it out. They don't have social no. security numbers in the UK. They don't. Do they? Well, no. th does the UK have any national ID system? <coughs> That's what uh, the prime minister uh, was trying to push for. Oh, there, there, so like, there is none. Like so you really can ID be cards. anonymous in, no, 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 in no. the UK. Hey, didn't the prime minister Blair, before he left... Downing Street, didn't he put in some kind of universal ID s system that they were going to put in for you guys? I don't, I, 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 yeah, that, that's a good question. But so, what was Lee Pace in? Was he yeah, in the Immortals? They have a card. They have an ID card. He was not in Immortals. No, that was someone else. We'll get to that. That was Luke Evans. That was Luke Evans. But Lee Pace, I, I always get their names confused. He what was, was in Lee The Fall. The, the, the Fall? The Fall, yes. He was in The Fall. With Anthony Hopkins? That was directed by Tarsum. Right before Tarsum did the Immortals, I just watched the Immortals this week. And the Fall, no, the Fall, Legends of the Fall, no, 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 not with Anthony oh, no. Hopkins, not <laughs> with Anthony Legends Hopkins. Legends of the Fall. <laughs> Come on, just the Fall. What was the Fall about? The Fall is about a stuntman who works in Hollywood silent movies in the 1920s, and he has a morphine addiction while he's in a hospital. Was it foreign? No, it's an American film directed and written by Tarsum, and the the young man played by Lee Pace is trying to convalesce in a hospital in Los Angeles from an injury while he's doing a big train stunt on a black and white silent movie. Who else is in it? Um, an unknown child actress who is oh, barely nine, nine years old, eight years old, and he has a relationship with this other girl who's in the hospital, and he tries to tell her wild, imaginative stories about another world, and her imagination goes wild. And the Wait, audience... are you sure that wasn't in a foreign language? No, it's completely in English. Produced in I, English. I, it's an I, I English remember language seeing film. a similar movie where a guy and is laid up in the hospital. We, the movie takes okay. us to the stunning visuals of her imagination while Lee Pace is really trying to manipulate her to get morphine out of the pharmacy. Yeah. And he's telling her these imaginative stories and her imagination is wandering to distant lands that look like they were filmed around the world. And they were. They filmed in like 20 odd different countries around the world. It's the most visually stunning thing you'll ever see. But it's set in Los Angeles in the, in the late 20s. During the era of silent filmmaking. So Thranduil is Legolas' father, correct? Yes, he is. Absolutely Legolas' father. And yeah. Toriel is, is Legolas' sister? That's true, Shersa. That little girl in the movie was so cute. Yeah, she had no acting experience, and she was really stunning. Really stunning in that film. But Evangeline Lilly was pretty much an unknown face until J.J. Abrams put her in Lost. Right. Then yeah. everyone in America fell in love with her. So it's, Even it's, though she played a bad girl. Is very Toriel bad girl. Legolas' sister? Because all the, all the toys no. feature them together. No, no, they, they work together. She's the commanding officer. Together. She's the commanding officer in the armed forces protecting Thranduil. So Legolas reports to her? He's the, he's the prince, sovereign prince of the realm. He, so she reports to him. I don't know who reports to who, but okay. you know, evidently he's cooperating with her. Of course you wouldn't know because it's he's, a new character. Well, I know. We're about to find out. And how. Thran Thranduil is the king. Yes, he's the king. Yes. Of the elves. Yep. The Sindarin, the Sindar elves, who what? lived in Greenwood the Great, how, later how, to be named Mirkwood. How does Thranduil's position compare to Galadriel's? Or Elrond's? Well, she is a high elf. He is a Sindarin elf. 
There's like high elves and then there's dark elves who never went to the realm of Valinor. Okay. Galadriel went to the realm of Valinor and then left or was exiled, depending upon how the story is told, during the War of the Silmarils and the great early prehistory of Middle-earth. Galadriel is a high elf who has been exposed to the blessed realm and the light of the trees of Valinor. The Sindarin elves who live in Mirkwood, like Legolas and his dad, Thranduil, they've never seen the light of the trees Has of Valinor. Elrond seen the light of the trees? Yes. So Elrond and Galadriel went on a trip and came back, and that's why they're and superior. The, and, and they're, yeah, and, and because there's, there's a metaphysical difference between different elves who had not traveled back to the Blessed Realm. So what is the difference between someone like Thranduil, besides going to the these lands, what is the difference uh, in, in, in to talk to me in real person, like, well, you know, between it's, Thranduil it's, it's, and they've, Elrond? They've, they've, they've had exposure to divine power, okay? Thranduil has not been exposed to divine power and has not seen the angelic light and the afterlife of Valinor. He doesn't, he doesn't, he operates at a more, if you will, mundane level of elfdom so instead of an inspired divine level so it would and be he doesn't possess the same power although he is a powerful individual he doesn't possess the same enlightenment or experience having been to valinor so it'd be that's more technically the the difference thranduil is more like how elrond was portrayed in the prologue to fellowship of the ring yeah. where elrond is on the front lines with isildur he is gritty and dirty and, and, and face, what, what do you need to... I want to get to the Barlaman's chat room. I wanted to see if anybody else has some other interesting insight on uh, uh, on uh, what we were just talking about. Oh, there they are. There they are. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're mostly following the Stickam chat. Um, so if you go to stickam.com slash C... Uh, actually, the <laughs> chat, ro chat room might, might be embedded on, on the wondering.net slash live. But if it's not, go to stickam.com slash the wondering net. And uh, we're, we're kind of following the chat there. Kelly Kelly Duck said that the Wood Elves in Mirkwood were kind of like the rednecks of the elves, like the so the, friend, the, friend yeah, yeah. the unwashed second cousins. But so, <laughs> so Downfall of Numenor says, I thought that the first time Elrond saw the light was when he first sailed with the Ring Bearers. It was his ancestors. Ah, you know what? That might be correct. Yeah, that might be right. correct. So Downfall so of Numenor. so Thranduil is like a, a <coughs> more war torn, bat battle ready elf like Elrond was in in the the that prologue mm -hmm. the very first thing that anybody sees mm -hmm. in Lord of the Rings the beginning fellowship is Elrond on the front line one saying of, da, da, da. yeah one of, one of the other big differences of Elrond is that he's a ring bearer he possesses one of the elven rings of power and Thranduil doesn't no absolutely not Galadriel had the second ring right the third ring was possessed by Kirdan, who was the elf at the Grey Havens, who helps uh, the ships sail off into the west. Okay. When Gandalf came to the shores of Middle Earth, Kirdan gave his elven ring of power, the ring of fire, gave it to Gandalf, and Gandalf is the third elven ring bearer. Gotcha. So it was passed from the elven uh, uh, lord of the Grey Havens, Kirdan, passed that ring on to Gandalf. So the other two rings were held by Elrond, played by Hugo Weaving, and of course Galadriel. So there, so, so there could that's be another difference. In so there could be some some uh, uh, tension between Thranduil, king of the the uh, uh, leader of the elves, and um, uh, between Thranduil and Elrond and, they, their and paths, Galadriel. Their paths never meet. Their paths never meet. Their paths never, never well, meet. Well, they don't have to meet, but he can he can still be bitter. Like, while well, you guys well, are doing your like la 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 thing. Maybe maybe we see maybe there's evidence we're protecting, of that. Protecting it, we're maybe. protecting the lands. Maybe there's evidence of that in Fellowship of the Ring because Thranduil does not show up to the Council of Elrond. Right. Who shows up? He sends his son. He doesn't even bother going to the, bother like going all to the, the other the leaders of men. He sends his son Legolas to go and do that. Well, emissary so, work. Uh, are, and are well, you same with Gondor? Same Gondor with Gondor didn't yeah, send you know the the um uh, the John Noble character the the yeah, uh, steward of the Gondor. Steward. No, who gets sent? The son. son. Yeah. The oldest son. Uh, Boromir and Faramir were the difference in age. Yes, Boromir who? was the eldest. Yeah, the he eldest. was the eldest. Yes, he was. So okay, so who who else do we have in the new faces category? <gasps> Look, there is Bard. Played by Luke Evans. Luke Evans was, we're going to go through this, Luke Evans, Stephen Fry's Master of Lake Town, Billy Connolly, and of course Benedict Cumberbatch as Smaug. So let's, we'll go through this. Luke Evans yeah. uh, was in uh, the fantastically designed Immortals. He played the Zeus, um, the youngest Zeus ever portrayed on film, I, I, I might say. 
Um, and uh, I guess uh, he Luke Evans is a hey, oh my the god ladies. Stargate geek you've never read Lord of the Rings okay yes you guys do need to learn about where Gandalf got his ring from and I'm glad to provide some insight that's what I do co-hosting this show but I'm I'm very surprised that you guys are regular Ringer fans and you haven't even finished reading the whole Lord of the Rings well, even that's even that's he fine. has read the Lord of the Rings yeah but I, I, that's fine not reading is fine I'll just say that. Um, but Luke Evans, I, I'd say he was the best part of Immortals. Yeah, Luke Evans is by far the most pissed off Zeus I've and ever wasn't, seen. Wasn't he? He was dangerously angry. He was a great performance. It was great. And wasn't he in the, the, the really latest good. Three Musketeers uh, yeah, iteration? Yeah, which was a complete bomb and nobody saw it. And, and it, doesn't he have uh, it a was worth six seeing, pack though. of abs? Like, the ladies really like this guy. He's mega ripped. Yeah, but he's not for the ladies. So what? how, how large Luke, of a... Luke ca- Evans, is, you know, came out of the closet a long time ago. So how, Just like Ian McKellen did. How large of a, a role is Bard the Bowman? Well, his role has been significantly expanded, as has the roles of Radagast and all these other characters. Bard the Bowman is now going to be shown on screen with his son, with his family. But in The Hobbit, there's no mention of that. In the pages of the book, that's not mentioned. However, in the back of the appendix, Tolkien specifically mentions, here's Bard's children, and they were the descendants who held the line of the Bardings after the events of The Hobbit. So, so, what, what, so what, the characters, are the boys, the boys and the sons of, of Bard will be in the movie. So what, 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 what role does Bard play in the story? Bard the Bowman. I mean, when I think of Bard, I think it, that's not a name. Like a Bard is someone that sings. Mm-hmm. You know, the, that's the where town the name comes Bard. from. The so Bard. Bard the Bowman. Uh-huh. So does he have a bow? Does he play the harpsichord? Nope. <laughs> No, he has nothing nothing musical associated with his name. Nothing musical. But he so is, the he name is a master is a total misnomer. archer. He's a master archer. And the name is, well, you know, where there's do, a whole Where line. does this archer live? Is he human? Yes, he's human. He lives in Lake Town with other men of Lake Town. And they're men of the north. Men of the northern kingdom. And the master of Lake Town, his role will be expanded as well. There's going to be some type of military um, disagreement and struggle between the people of Lake Town trying to decide whether they should follow the master of Lake Town, played by Stephen Fry, or whether they should follow this young upstart, Bard, who actually has faith in Thorin when Thorin and company arrives that the king under the mountain has indeed fulfilled the prophecy and returned to claim their kingdom. So, There's a whole bunch so of stuff a, going on. So he's an whole expert archer who, yes. is, who, is the, uh, who is one of the dissenters in the town saying, you know what, there's something about these dwarves that... Uh, we we should believe in. Uh huh. Yes. So d- what what role does he have in the first third of the book? Well, his, his, in Bard doesn't appear ever in the first third of the book. So he, he, he will only not ap- be in this first movie. He might he'll, he'll appear in the second film. That's right. In the second film. Yeah. So this magazine was printed at the time when we still thought, oh wow, cool, there's going to be two movies. But then it became three. At the last minute, we had to do a whole big change, and we have this new section called 280 pages three movies and it, it it appears right here in the center of the of the book because we got the news and everyone's like oh holy cow three movies the third film there and back again the hobbit yeah. which will be now bard is descended from the men who used to rule in dale dale was another city north of lake town and uh we're going to see a lot of the dale set in the film especially before in the, the dragon. first movie yeah before the dragon burns it Oh my gosh, it's a huge place. It's a beautiful set. It's one of the most intricate and beautiful outdoor sets that Peter Jackson had them build. Weta stuffed the Dale location set with details and beautiful stuff. And then we get to see it in its glory before the dragon comes and destroys it. Then they had the burned version of the set where they did all the other shots and scenes after Dale was but destroyed. But Bard's, n- Bard's not in that. that no, but th- well, you know... Maybe, maybe he helps the dwarves in their journey up the river to go up towards the Lonely Mountain. Maybe he will be. So, but, but, but you know, Bard but is usually is, is lives in Lake Town, and uh-huh. the master of Lake Town, which is kind of the mayor of Lake Town. Yes, he's is, the mayor. Is being yeah. played by Stephen Fry. Now he plays a human. So or, not, or or the king, or the the ruling the ruling the, the, ruling, ruler, the steward the, ru- the steward the ruler. Yeah. The, so so Stephen Fry, just like uh, 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 just like who who is that? Who controlled the the mountain top in Rohan? Um, oh, that was King Theoden. King Theoden, he and was then there the, was the steward. He was the lord of the Riddermark. Right. 
Yes. So this is e the equivalent. Yeah. Okay. He's master of Lake Town. He's the top political dog. He's the ruler. So, so Lake of Town is not in the land of Ridamark, and it isn't no. in the land of Gondor. It's way it far is. to the north northeast tip of Mirkwood, right outside the realm of Thranduil. And they continue to have business and dealings with the Wood Elves. And Lake Town has a pretty good business, thanks to Thranduil and his elves requesting wine. And there are shipments of wine that are brought up the running river from Dorwinion, where the best grapes, the best grapes in Middle Earth are grown. And the wine gets shipped through Lake Town. They have a lot of commerce over to Thranduil. And we'll we'll see some of these scenes with the wine drinking later on. So we in the you, second film. Yeah, we won't see film. Stephen Fry in the first film. Only in the and second he, film. Yeah, yes. We he may or may not he probably won't be buried in makeup and prosthetics because he's playing a human. Yeah, I think he's got a weird wig, weird ha hair pace. But Dane or Dian Ironfoot, played by Billy Connolly, will be buried in makeup. Yeah, well, he'll be in the third film. You won't see him in the second film at all. But he's playing. He'll a, be in the he, third. He's film. playing a dwarf. Yeah. So a battle-hardened yeah. dwarf. So Billy will be buried in some sort of makeup, just like all the other dwarf actors. Um, I mean, yeah. you can hardly tell most of them who who they are even though they kind of look like their characters are buried in these big dwarven beards and, and hair so um so billy Connolly will may not look like billy Connolly, but as soon as he opens his voice uh, yeah. oh, 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 as soon as he opens his mouth you'll know it's billy Connolly. <laughs> i can't wait for that the question is will billy Connolly play this comedically or play it dramatically like he did uh, boondock saints because he's one of the funniest men out uh, at, in the world right now. Yeah, he is, and I wonder what kind of funny he can bring to such a serious role. But how about this? Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be not just the voice of Smaug, but he's going to be standing upright, a bipedal humanoid necromancer in some scene in Dol Guldur. There's going to be something there. Is and that it, in the it, first it movie? It must be. It must be. Dol Guldur is in the first movie. It must be, because... The necromancer is going to be torturing poor um, Thorin's dad, uh, Thrain, trying to get information from him and try to get his map and his key. So, you know, the necromancer in the pits of Dol Guldur will probably be seen interrogating, I suspect. I don't know this at all for sure. Right. But my, my speculative mind has a pretty good instincts. And I don't know for sure, but I'm saying it is likely that the necromancer as played by Benedict Cumberbatch, will be standing upright, walking around, the actor himself. What his makeup might look like or what he might look like, I don't know. Uh, will we have he be no a shadow? Idea. Will he look like the mouth yeah. of Sauron? Well, yeah, will he be all weird makeup like mouth of Sauron, which didn't quite work, which is why they cut it from the theatrical film. Um, but So he'll <sighs> be in the first movie. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he may be in Indeed. Speaking of the first movie, all right. he is only in look the first this. movie. Andy only. Circus is only. only in the first movie. Then there's no more Andy Circus in movie two and three. Isn't that too bad? Do you think he'll add him in now? He may. He may show us a glimpse of Gollum being so craven to get his ring back that he actually emerges from the Misty Mountains and goes in search of Bilbo and starts to track him. You know, uh, uh, maybe uh, Peter Jackson will show that. Uh, Audrey in the chat room brings up a good point about uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as yeah. Smaug and the Necromancer, two characters that you really don't see. I mean, Smaug is a dragon, yeah. and the Necromancer you don't really see. How do they take the one of the most iconic, beautifully beautiful people in the in this movie, arguably? I mean, he has Benedict Cumberbatch has a huge following because he yes, is just he, does. he, yes. he is Sherlock Right? He is. And, and, I mean, he is just a he's in, good looking he's guy. In, he's in Spielberg's War Horse, yeah. makes a fantastic impression in Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Soldier Spy, Spy. With Gary Oldman. As if anybody could steal the thunder from Gary, Gary Oldman, Oldman in a film like that. Yeah. And so, Cumberbatch did so. And, yeah, and he's awesome. Burying him, they're, they're burying yeah. his looks. Like, you hire a guy for his looks. And then no. you bury his looks under shadows and makeup. But and no, they hired effects. him for his voice. His voice. Not only that, but Stephen Hawking's Into the Universe documentary series is completely narrated by benedict cumberbatch you guys have netflix 
Dial it up on Netflix right now. It's and on watch Netflix now? Stephen Hawking's Into the Universe. Oh. Only three episodes, but it is the best exposure to the voice of Smaug and Benedict Cumberbatch it's that you'll the, ever you know, hear. I'll, I'll, it's great. I'll watch that just it's to get some great. voice quotes. You'll so. get really good Benedict Cumberbatch voice in that show. So these Super good. spy photos, you're oh. right. These are aerial photos of the set. That's a low flyover, and they're not permitted there, but they did it anyways. And what can Warner Brothers do? Except hire the New Zealand military to help ward off planes? <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, oh, come on. Sets in the countryside. We're actually on location getting spy photos that have leaked. They were reported online, and the OneRing.net brought the news first. Guys, check this out. A multi-million dollar production turning a sheep farm into an external set. And then we got a look at Lake Town and Green Screen that was being uh, built right over there at Stone Street Studios. All right, do we have a color pointer that we have like we did before? No. So, but look in the second row of, uh, in the farthest row on the right, and you guys see that the is top, that the top picture too. The top picture is from the interior, but the exterior is standing outside the gate. That's where you stand on the street to enter Stone Street Studios, and it, those are all pieces of Lake Town. This is Lake Town. Uh huh. That's where Stephen Fry. So the, the top and pictures are Lake Town. Actually, yeah. all of those pictures are Lake Town, aren't they? No, the lower pictures seem to be either Roscoe Bell, but more likely those seem to be Bjorn's Hall, because there's a space for the owls and the birds to come and go through the arches. You see the lower picture on the very bottom? Yeah. Yeah, guys, this is definitely what we think is Bjorn's Hall, because he has a relationship with the, the animals, and the creatures come and go as messengers, perhaps, from his halls, and the owls were coming and going in those arches. But really? Yeah, but, and I've seen Roscoe Bell. It came out in that stunning new book of artwork, Art from the Hobbit movie, yeah. you know, Weta put that book out. So you can see that Roscoe Bell is a different place than this. And here is a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown that we got from the, the, the first trailer and the scroll, that amazing scroll of images that came through from the magazine Entertainment Weekly. See the bottom one? Mm -hmm. The entire scroll features everything to the end of the first film, including the fires up in the trees and the rescue by the eagles. Then the next thing we did in this magazine, uh, which was one of the highlights of the whole thing, this is just amazing. This timeline has lots and lots of details. It is called the Momentous History of Middle Earth Timeline. And it features. And so, does it? Does this timeline prove my point that it is te technically possible in the timeline that Gollum killed Frodo's parents? Maybe not, because here it says Deagle, in 2463, a Hobbit-like creature finds the One Ring in the Great River Anduin and is murdered by his brother Smeagol. So Smeagol becomes Gollum, but that takes hundreds and hundreds of years for that to happen, and uh, Gollum never went that far, you know, west to the Shire. You're, 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 you're talking smack. Again, Gollum went after Bilbo in the other direction, going towards Erebor, going towards Thranduil. And it was Legolas and the elves, the elves of Mirkwood, who captured Gollum in Mirkwood because Gollum was wandering around there looking for Bilbo. Okay. And then he gets loose. He escapes with the help of some of the orcs that had come from Dol Guldur, evidently, or Gollum escaped and ends up being captured by the Dark Lord and taken to Mordor. He never went that far to the Shire. That, that was ever, ever discussed by Tolkien. He, it, there is, a, never there is a window of time never where he is not uh, accounted for in any text, which gives an opportunity for him to go there. Just, just, like, Pe just like Peter Jackson is, Jackson is saying, we don't know what Gandalf did when he left the Company of Dwarves. But so in this movie, he has the op Peter Jackson has the opportunity to flesh out that story and maybe come up with some 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 adventures of Gandalf and some conversations that Gandalf may have had. That's what I'm. That's all You're I'm crazy. saying is that it is quite possible. Uh, it's it's a smack talking. Do you think Peter Jackson will show what happened to Frodo's parents to show why Jive Frodo, talking Frodo with is tonight. the way he is? Jive talking. This is all jive talking. What, what do you mean? So do you do you think Peter Jackson will show Frodo's parents? I am curious about that. I've wondered. I have wondered if there's a possibility that we'll see how Bilbo adopts his young nephew. But you know, they they died in a boating accident. That's all that we ever know. 
There is a th- th- there is all a we fan need to know. film called uh, The Hunt for Gollum. Yes, it's, a popular one. It yeah. is super popular. It is on YouTube. Uh huh. The <clears> full <throat> movie is on YouTube. And it's really cool. I think it's on iTunes, and I don't know if it's on Netflix. Uh, I don't think I've seen it on Netflix, but you know what else is on Netflix? The the uh, well, Ringers used to be, but I don't know if it's on there anymore. Uh, the People vs. George Lucas is on there. It used to be. Uh, it went off of my instant queue, so and again, I had it there. W- w- you are watching uh, Tolkien okay. Tuesdays, The Hobbit Show, and we're going through... The Hobbit Show, provided by the OneRing.net. I'm Clifford Broadway. I'm and Justin. This is Justin over here. I am also known as QuickBeam online at the OneRing.net. And we're going through the new... Hobbit magazine, which is in two stores only. It's at Barnes and Noble, mm-hmm. and it's at Walmart. And we are going through and showing you what is in this. This was edited, and a lot of the content provided by the fans at the One Ring. All of it, a hundred percent of this content provided really? by the fans at the One Ring. So all uh, the people volunteered their their time and their effort yeah. and, and their writing. Oh, you did. You did ability. get all the ones I sent. So we've got. Uh, uh, it, it, it's it's available on newsstands now at yeah. two stores. It's not available online. And we were just looking at the outdoor set of Hobbiton, yep. which is in Matamata on the North Island. And we've got some pictures of the sets of Lake Town. An and analysis, a scene-by-scene scene scene analysis of the trailer. And uh, and then we've got a Middle Earth timeline to show you how these events kind of uh, space out as it compared to, to Lord of the Rings. Now, the, this timeline is a really cool addition because of some great artwork, uh, inset artwork from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm-hmm. And you can see all the events that happened even up to the, the third age where Bilbo leaves the Shire and entrusts the ring to Frodo at the long-expected party. And then right on through the whole War of the Ring, which and at the very end of the War of the Ring, it began the fourth, the fourth age of Middle-earth uh, when the ring was destroyed. So look, look at look at this man. This is a Jan. You did a great bit of work. Jan Sterling, another volunteer writer. She's amazing. She built this timeline, and then there are pictures of real locations in New Zealand, right over here. See, Wellington, Frodo's secret hiding spot, where he says, "Get off the road, get off the road." It's right oh, that's there. It? It's on Mount Victoria, and that is an exact path wow. that you can walk yourself. You can walk right up to the top. And take it's a walking path. Why haven't path. we seen a lot of YouTube videos of people recreating that scene? I wonder why. Maybe there are yeah. some. And then here, at Mount Doom was the volcanic plateau in the center of the North Island, right around Mount Ruapehu, and Edoras was down on the South Island by Mount Sunday. Extraordinary place. What a beautiful, beautiful place. Oh, Pete, w- are we boring you? You're 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 playing with your beard. And What's Pete like doing? He's got he's got a, a hoodie and beard on now. And then what else did we explore? Mavora Lakes, which is one of the beautiful spots down there where they had um, uh, Merry and Pippin hiding from the rampaging orcs. And as you can see on screen, there's a note about Red Carpet Tours, who we've love a- it had on the show here. Um, Red Carpet Tours are actually hosting uh, the premiere. Oh yes, um, a thing. big premiere party um, in a month and a half. In six what, weeks. Yeah, it's at the end of November. Yeah, and uh, November twenty fourth, I ex- think. Exclusively through the One Ring dot net, um, we're doing a a, the, Ooh, a, yes. a party, mm-hmm. a premiere party that you get access to, and then Red Carpet Tours will take you all around New Zealand and show you all this stuff. The real, actual shooting locations. There's nothing like it, guys. If you if you ever have a chance, save your money and take one of those excellent tours with red carpet tours because they'll take you to the place where Aragorn touches the ground and says, a hobbit lay here and he was bound. He cut his bonds and then Aragorn's running around tracking all the things that happened with Merry and Pippin the night before and you're standing on that exact spot on the edge of Fangorn Forest. Really? It's so beautiful. And it, isn't the it's tour so hosted great. by... Uh, yeah. By uh, or an accomplished author, I believe. Well, there's actually it's um, Ian Brody, the an accomplished photographer. Photographer. He is the guy who published the book, Lord of the Rings set locations, the filming locations book, one of the best selling books in the history of the country of New Zealand, and they'll take you there to the same exact spots where Gandalf stood and went. Really. And Shadowfax runs over the hill. Oh, that's so. And weird. you're standing there, and you can run over that hill right where Shadowfax was. You'll love it. It's so great there. And where Viggo Mortensen broke his toe, that's right. Yeah, when he kicked the helmet. Um, so uh, th- The Hobbiton set, the, the set, the outdoor set for right. Hobbiton, is standing. 
It is lush and green, covered and with landscaping. Fixture. And the permanent props from the movie are there. And you can go and visit and see Bag End and the Hobbit holes. Because I, I remember on the Lord Up of the close. Rings, they, they, they made a big deal when you watch the appendices on, on the DVD and Blu-ray that they made a big deal that everywhere they shot in New Zealand had to be restored to what it looked like before. So they had mm-hmm. to like cover over all their tracks and replant all the plants that that, yes, that, the, the, that, that tire tracks had left. And they there was a big deal made of the fact that you're shooting in New Zealand and you have to leave everything as it was. Well, it turns out Lord of the Rings was such a huge hit that people lamented the fact that, oh, I wish these sets were still here mm-hmm. to visit. And so I guess with this Hobbit, the, uh, the, the tourism board and everybody in New Zealand said, you know what? Why don't you just leave the sets there? We'll handle well, it. Well, that, that, that actually be- happened because the private owner of the farm, the sheep farm, yep. said, I'm agreeable to keeping it. You don't have to tear it back down. I'd love to keep it open. Let's keep it open. And they struck a deal, and they got a licensing agreement, and everybody at Tolkien Enterprises was happy. New Line was happy. Peter Jackson said, I'll bring my crew, and here comes Weta and the designers, and we'll, bring the, we'll leave the props. And then what happens? The Greens Department from the studio goes down there to replant everything. everything. It's gorgeous. It's the most beautiful place, but it's legit like the movie set was made and left the way they filmed it. It is left the way they shot the shots. It's go- so gorgeous. You'll love it when you get there. And then what's the next page we have in our crazy tribute magazine? Oh, we start going into merchandise. Oh, now. no. If you've been Look following us on, on our Facebook page at the one uh, Facebook slash the stuff. one ring net. Look uh, at this. I mean, there's some amazing... Fine Art Limited Edition Sting for $7,999. Holy either, smokes, Either really? you go to New Zealand for one-third the price of that blade, or you buy that absolute... Well, you, did you see that you can buy gold perfect coins? Perfect replica. Uh, official uh, New wow. Zealand currency, gold currency. Uh, uh, oh employee. yeah, new dwarf currency that the New Zealand Mint yeah. has brought out. Oh real my god, real currency that you can spend and you can buy, and it's it's gold. real currency and it's real gold. It's real dwarf money too. Isn't that great? Do we, we got to show some pictures of that before the show is over? But look at there's the there's the bloody chess set. There's the Gollum Smeagol bookends. No. Those are actually pretty cool. I wish they had done that er, 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 uh, earlier uh, on the mm. uh, original ones. What else do we have? This is the article that I provided. Personally, really? I'm really, really upset of with course, the... Of course, you, you, love, uh, you I love, love cartoons. I love animation, but I'm upset with the editors because they left my byline off completely. And at another time, when Larry Curtis, he, he did a, an article in here too. Right. They messed up his name and g- called him uh, Larry something else with a different last name. Oh. And, so, and they left my byline off of the article, but we had a great time it's getting an exclusive. About, it's not about you. It's not about it's me. It's about... It's about the Everybody. exclusive. We got this great interview with the animation historian Rick Goldschmidt, who has all the Rankin and Bass archives. And these are the guys who did Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the classic Christmas specials from the 50s and the 60s. Right. You know, remember the little drummer boy that they did? Oh, all yeah, All in yeah, stop motion yeah. animation? The set, the well, here, he's published a new book, a new celebration of the enchanted world of Rankin and Bass. These are the guys who worked with Peter S. Beagle and did The Last Unicorn as well. That animated movie is wonderful. And the animated Hobbit, and they also did an interesting adaptation of The Return of the King, made for television, and it was so cool to sit down with the animation historian. He brought out all these archives and these old 2D hand-painted art cells. Wow. Made in Japan, and he answers, quite honestly, about how Arthur Rankin went from New York City to visit Japan in the 1950s, and I asked him the following question. Why would these guys in New York City develop a co-production with Japanese designers and artists who are working in tandem with their American counterparts? And he said that he discovered these Japanese artists had talents for animation he had never seen before. So in 1960, they decided to do their first ever production right there. It was the syndicated series called The New Adventures of Pinocchio. And the rest is history. Arthur continues to visit Tokyo and the animators to this day. And the background paintings by Minoru Nishida exceptionally captured the look and the feel of Tolkien's books. These animators went on to work with Miyazaki. Some of them went on to Studio Ghibli to work with some of Miyazaki's earliest films. But that's why you see a look 
quality to Rankin Bass animated work, and even in The Last Unicorn and in The Hobbit, that looks very much like that. And they went on to work with Thundercats. Remember that? Yep. And the TV show Silverhawks, also produced by Rankin and Bass. Okay. And the same designers and animators did these backgrounds and Lion-O and, the, and Mumra and all these great creatures from Thundercats, inspired by the same exact team who went on to work forward. Isn't that cool? So it's all connected to The Hobbit and Tolkien as well. Do you think, do you think <clears> there's <throat> room for, for more uh, of these hand-drawn animated uh, uh, movies that, like, they, that, like they used to? <coughs> Absolutely. Of course I do. Absolutely. Did you see The Secret World of Arietti? that was adapted from the popular British book, The Borrowers. It was just released, you know, by, uh, why do you think by Ghibli, Studio Ghibli this year. Why do you year. think Japan is the only one putting out uh, feature-length animated films on a yearly basis? Everyone in America Are is now... Are they just, like, ten years behind us? No, everyone in America is now producing digital animation. Right. So why, why, do, you think, uh, why do you think all of this hand-drawn stuff is happening in Japan right now? They, they value the art form more than Americans do. Americans are now watching a lot of stop motion animation. Look, we had Paranorman and Frankenweenie just come out within four or five weeks of each other. And this is, you know, stop motion animation that's really expensive and beautiful. But every other American appetite for animation has been influenced by Pixar. Pixar has caused a sea change in the way American audiences digest their animated artwork. In Japan, they still love the 2D feel of that artwork and I love it too I love it personally yeah I, think it's I, great. I remember I remember in the mid 80s when uh, when Disney <coughs> animated film hand-drawn animated films weren't weren't doing so well and you had you had them experimenting with this kind they of didn't. Rankin bass style or dark uh, uh, darker movies well um, yeah when Disney tried not Rankin bass but um, uh, uh, who, who did John K work for John Kay, he worked for Ralph Bakshi. R Bakshi, for yeah. ba Bakshi's animation team. So all of these uh, animators that were uh, highly skilled, that used to do feature films like Robin Hood and Jungle Book and everything, yeah. they were just sitting around. So Disney said, you know what, why don't we just start doing uh, animated series? We need y You guys want something to do? Why don't you go make Tailspin and Rescue Rangers and Darkwing Duck and DuckTales? And you yeah. started to see some high-quality animation. You did. On on uh, on a daily basis, I and and those those cartoons changed everything. The best the best anim the best animation that's coming out of America these days still is the Legend of Korra and Avatar: The Last Airbender. Nickelodeon should be given some credit for giving those producers a chance to bring that show on the air. Yeah, it is a show that looks Japanese, inspired by Chinese mythology and architecture, and yet produced in America by an American Italian production team. Really? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's the best stuff. Legend of Korra is stunning. If you haven't seen it, it blows everything else out of the water. Mm -hmm. And I hope they get a lot of Emmys. Now, going forward, the rest of our magazine, we trip the trigger on super fans who cover their bodies in tattoos. Look at those what? sleeves. <laughs> Look at the sleeves with Eye of Sauron on all of them down there. Look at that. Really? You see that? Oh yeah. That is crazy. The best human tattoos? mural. Oh yeah, these are great tattoo designs. That that ain't coming off, yo. Like that's permanent. Yep, R Richard Mullen. We were uh, to represent. He says he wants to represent his love and enjoyment of Tolkien in art, on or under my skin. I felt that staying true to a theme was much more important. It just felt right. Does anybody in the video chat have a, a Lord of the Rings tattoo? You, you can show us, like. Pretty amazing. Wow, look at this, guys. These tattoos are amazing. We saw some amazing tattoos on our road uh, tr on our road trip. You know, uh, even, even one of the last people we saw in uh, in Vegas had uh, just had had just had a tattoo done uh, down at their ankle. Right oh yeah, yeah. Well, I did see that. I did see that. Now look at look at the next page. Our friend Pat Acton, who built Matchstick Minas Tirith. We <laughs> we just had a great interview with uh, him that was published on the one ring uh, about a month ago by J.W. Braun I believe he interviewed him yep. and it was so cool we're fixing to get over to Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum here in Hollywood California so we can get up close and do live footage of this giant sculpture recreating with meticulous exactitude Minas Tirith the great white city of Gondor built out of 
four hundred and sixty odd thousand matchsticks. Holy Each one God. single matchsticks. And the, the, the crazy thing is, not only did he build it, which is crazy enough, they oh figured out how to ship that to Los Angeles. To disassemble it? From from Iowa. The packaging of from it? From, like, middle of Iowa. How much of it would break during shipment? How much would you dare like that a matchstick match- Minas Tirith would yeah. break? Do you think they had to... Do you think they just sawed it into pieces after the fact? Or do you think he had to plan it ahead of time? Like, okay, I'm going to make Minas Tirith, and it took three or four oh years. Oh, my gosh. And then he had planned ahead. It's like, okay, this section will come out, and we'll package this. I don't even know because, uh, like, we're talking middle of nowhere Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, like, totally middle of nowhere Iowa. But uh, he took how many months to put this thing together? All we, all we, all, all we got to do is get a couple of more things confirmed with the nice folks at Ripley's Believe It or Not, as soon as we get that confirmation, they're working out sorting some details. We're going to bring our live show to Ripley's Believe It or Not in Hollywood, and we'll show you up close the real matchstick Minas Tirith. Can you get some kind of a special camera, a microscopic camera, that they do for shooting nature footage and bugs, so we can get really, really, really close in oh, on yeah, it? Absolutely. Do you think we can get some kind of an That'd attachment to the camera? I would love to do that. We we totally got we're, we're we're right around the corner from setting this up. That thing is legit. Fantastic. And who else? Look at the next page. They built a Rivendell freaking Lego, which is infinite. It's got the waterfalls, it's got the bridges. These guys, Blake Bear and Jack Bittner, put together this these teenagers put together this stunning sculpture. Thanks for wow. uh, thanks for staying with us, guys. We know there's a, a, a presidential debate going on right now, but but this is more know, fun. This is much more fun. Eighty hours to build this giant Rivendell, eighty hours, and they all they actually uh, just started a new that's, bag end sculpture. They're gonna make that's not a kit. Like they did that <laughs> from scratch. You know yeah, what I'm surprised? That is not a did, kit. Did, did we feature our, our uh, torn staffer um, uh, with uh, the the seven foot uh, uh, tower? Of Barador? No, that's not featured in this magazine, and it should have been. Our, our own staffer and her husband built from scratch the Tower of Barador, uh, right? That's, you know, yeah. That, yeah, out, of, out Lego. of Lego. Like, it's yeah. taller than them. It is taller than them. And and then recently he, he made a, a, a shield um, from uh, Lord of the Rings, or oh, from yeah. uh, Legend of Zelda. I. I, I, I Big. Lego Tower of Orthanc, yeah. Yeah, Lego that, Tower of Orthanc is that, nuts. And, and our, one of our staffers who's helped out on many events, going back uh, to the Lion Parties and the Oscar Party, uh, just took out their living room. I think they even had to raise the roof in their own house to to make this <laughs> the size yeah. it is. I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, again, how do you build it in such a way that you can take it apart and then uh, take it on the road? Because they went to, to Lego... Um, conventions with it. Yeah, they did. Uh, oh man, that's amazing. We didn't even put, put it in our own magazine. Well, <clears throat> maybe we didn't get the rights to reproduce those images. There's a lot going on there. Well, did, there are a lot of pho- they're her photographs. Well, I, I tell don't you know. what. Yeah, good point. Maybe, maybe the editors didn't have enough room because we had so much content for this magazine. And down- guys, please run out, grab yourselves a copy and that our p- Hobbit tribute collector's edition. And that picture, uh, there's a picture down at the bottom of. of page uh, I wanted to include that those are the founders yeah. the original four people who started the one ring.net in 1999 and we're kind of we're, we're, our, our video thing is blocking it sorry about that Meg uh, Megwin are you with us Megwin shall we shall we go back over to talk about the hot dwarves section Megwin was the lovely lady who's in our Parliament's chat room and she wrote that sidebar about the hot dwarves and I think it's really good <laughs> it's really funny really yeah that's Megwin straight from the, the yeah there she is Look at that, Megwin. So, <clears throat> look, here's Figwit. Here is Brett McKenzie from Flight of the Concords. He's going to be coming back to play an elf in Rivendell. Oh, yeah. Top 25 most devoted fan bases. Look, so, so look again, that. this magazine is, is just called The Hobbit. Yep. A, a tr- tribute to the unexpected prequel. 
to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, very and unexpected. It, 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 you follow you followed along with the the production. So this magazine is one time only. I don't think there's reprints. Like no, they printed one it time. once. And that's if look if they print it once and they only printed seven thousand copies and if they all sell out, they might do another print run if they think they can get a few more thousand out the door. It just depends upon how quickly the appetite and is. And it's available at Walmart. And Barnes and Noble on the newsstands at Barnes and Noble and Walmart. That's right. So, how about that? And and it was. It, I mean, who are some of the staffers that, that uh, contributed to, to this? Again, we're, the oh. Wandering.net. It's all volunteer. I mean, nobody got paid for this. Well, one of the better one of the better pieces was this um, exploration of the supposed controversy of the higher frame rate, forty eight frames per second. Josh Rubenstein, who is on the Wandering.net as Saruman with a double N. Josh Rubenstein wrote this really cool article called How Real is Too Real? Check this out. See? <laughs> One of the more controversial creative decisions has been to release the movie in 3D and to shoot and project it at 48 FPS rather than the standard 24. Yeah, this is really a good article. Movies shot on film have a specific style and feel so subtle that we only notice it when it is removed or changed. Since films are traditionally shot and projected in 24 frames per second, the inherent jitter and motion blur that comes with it is something that audiences expect. Higher frame rates, like the standard 30 frames per second used in video, create a smoother motion. But because video is typically associated with low budget productions, our brains associate the images we see with more low-rent, direct-to-home video movies. <clears throat> Which is because we're only accustomed to that. Right. I think it's going to be game-changer. Like, people don't know they want it until they get it. And they're gonna, they're, everyone's going to see this and be like, oh, well, wow. Well, with the clearer image that you get from 48 frames per second, as Josh says in this article, combined with depth and high-quality 3D can make, we expect we'll be drawn into Middle-earth in a way that none of us have ever Experienced, yes, I'll agree with that. I'm, um, I'm pretty excited. I mean, and we've had that. We've uh, there's a few episodes that we've done here at the Hobbit Show that uh, talks about the 48 frames yes. d debate, and you've seen the footage. You know, in other news, uh, uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, th it's just ramping up now. You know, New York Comic Con was the last convention, that last major convention before the movie comes out. Uh, the premiere is yes. in Wellington of the Hobbit on November twenty fourth at the end of November, yep. uh, and then and then it premieres uh, around the world. I think the same day, December fourteenth, uh, in every country, I believe. I yeah. mean, they're going to go for just one worldwide. Do we know if it's wow. a Friday release or if they're going to do a Wednesday release? You know, how, like some movies come out on Wednesday. I'll tell you when we know. On November seventh, online ticket sales will go live. You guys need to mark your calendars. That's a very big, big date. November seventh. November seventh. We'll have. I, we're we're launching a new redesign of the One Ring .net. And do you know what else we're gonna do? We're gonna have the line parties. The line parties are going to be fantastic. Really? Yes. Did someone say Hobbit line party? Yes, we did. So. Uh, it's gonna be great. There's been uh, one of one of the most wonderful things of of. When the Lord of the Rings came out, especially the second movie and then the third movie, was that people around the world uh, went to their local theaters, the best local theater. You know how there's always like there's the Dollar Theater that gets second room movies, yeah. and then there's and then there's movie theaters that have the IMAX, and then some that have digital projection, and then 3D digital projection. Um, so we uh, are putting together a, a, a new feature on the Wondering.net where anyone in any town can sign up and be the unofficial host yes, of exactly. your local line party. So if you're in the middle of Terre Haute, Indiana, it's a self-created thing. You or, generate or this Iowa, yourselves. Or if you're in Burbank or Barstow, California, you anywhere can, you can find your local theater, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully the best one that you can, with the biggest screen and the best sound. And we and this guy recommends 3D 48 frames per second. I do. And I and do. I do too. Uh, it's going to be an IMAX. I saw the IMAX logo on the latest trailer. I don't know if I want to see it on IMAX. I'd rather no, see it. No, if it in wasn't shot on IMAX cameras, I wouldn't bother with a with them 
well, what are they, you know, transitioning the film to an IMAX format? I, it, because it, you'll lose the cropped edges of the film. It's not the way it was shot. Nah. I per- nah. I, I think a better uh, if you're gonna go if you're gonna rate the 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 ways to see the movie, I would say find a theater that is digital 3D, 48 frames per second. Yep. If you don't have that nearby, maybe what IMAX? Maybe just 3D. Just 24 3D. frames per second. Just see it in 3D. A regular 3D movie. And then, bef- and then after that, IMAX 3D. Yeah. And then after, after that. that, see it in just your regular 2D. 24. 20, just regular but old theater. You, you get to locally organize your event. You guys are going to be given the control. You'll be given the reins. And you can establish your own line party for that theater that's going to serve your community. It will be active. There will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all coming together especially if you're in a metropolis what if you're in boston what if you're in chicago everyone's going to want to go to mcclurg court yeah, theater in chicago is, that's what is, everyone will do and so it's open worldwide and so, so everyone will sign up and there'll be uh you know a, a person who has to be the first one who so, starts the so line you'll be party. able to just type in your 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 postcode or zip code and yep. and see what the local theaters where all the fans are getting together and maybe yep. do a a, a a lineup a few hours before or a few uh, a day before or several yeah, days a before. few days before um, costumes how, and food and however events you, however you yeah. like to do it so uh, the goal is to uh you know just be able fans be able to connect with each other uh, through the website, so hopefully in the next uh, week or two, we'll be rolling that out, and on uh, you know we'll be showing you how to use yeah. it uh, next week, I think, or the week after, whenever whenever we, it gets done, we'll show you here on the show, how, you know the process of signing up uh, mm-hmm. on the OneRing.net and then uh, posting, finding your great local theater, and then posting it and and getting if, people know. If if uh, there's no one who has established a line party in your town, start one for yourself. Then everyone who comes on line will immediately see, oh, here in um, here in where in Sioux Falls, remember the beautiful town we drove through. Oh, South Dakota. Well, you're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's a really great in little Wyoming. town. Uh, Wyoming or South Dakota? Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the Big that's Sioux right. River in South that's Dakota. Right, Come right. on, but I mean, I failed geography. The guy, the guy who met us there, he said everyone from around the state all drives he here. To to go to the club or the or the restaurants or the movies. So there's only going to be one theater in Sioux Falls where everyone in the community will – and it will be a thriving and, event. And it will be a great event, I'm sure. And, and and the goal is to not only connect fans, but hopefully the theater owners themselves will, can go to the website and see, uh-oh, I got a lot of fans coming uh-huh, yeah. for the premiere. I better book a, a second screen. Yep. Or And That's I better right. offer a special Hobbit deal. That's you know, right. Maybe you like better. two hot dogs for second breakfast. Another, another aspect for people who run the line party, they do need to be in communication with the theater owners. Because if you're going to bring hundreds of people lined up in elf costumes you a few days to, before, you, you better sh- communicate you, you, you with them. Should, you, you should yeah. go there first before you announce that this is the deal. You should go there and say, hey, are you going to show The Hobbit? What? How are you going to show it? Yeah. And then We're organizing a big event. Yeah. And they will see dollar signs, and they'll be very happy. They'll be very happy. They might even say, holy cow, look at all the interest of fans who are coming to my theater. I better upgrade my digital projector. Hmm, I That's might as right. well invest in it. And then you'll end up getting an up- upgrade. You'll get 48 frames per second at your theater if you show them that the interest has peaked that much. You know, and right? one, one of the reasons that, that, that we, we did this originally the, uh, at the Wondering.net, uh, you know, and it was in the old analog days of IRC chats and, and uh, uh, message boards. I can't remember what, what the message board system was, but everybody used it. Uh, Rec.arts.tolkien. Yes. The original so, one from the 60s or 70s? But uh, this yeah. this week, uh, uh, online magazine Vulture uh, posted uh, the 25 top fan bases. And, of course, Star Wars fans and top fan Twihards and, Star Trek fans. and Lady Gaga fans. And, you know, who's got the biggest fan bases across all media? And you know where Lord of the Rings fits in? Number six. Number six. At least we were higher than Insane Clown Posse. Number six, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, Twitter followers. Uh, <coughs> the, a random That's Tolkien funny. Twitter has 32,000 followers. Um, the OneRing.net is the main fan site. 
Uh, which oh, was great. We, we didn't even that? know. I, I didn't even know they mentioned us. They but made yeah, a big look, splash presentation look, about it's us. It's right there. Rec Arts Book Tolkien. Yeah, yeah. Rec dot arts <laughs> dot books dot Tolkien, and it continues to it, stay. It, it that's still right. continues. That's that's when you know the fan base is hardcore when we're still keeping up old uh, IRC <laughs> chats and, and old yeah, uh, uh, BBSs. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's take a look. At, you know, if if Lord of the Rings is number six, what as of two thousand twelve. Before now, this is before the Hobbit comes out, and I think this 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 number will change. It's once, a ridiculous list once because the Hobbit comes the out. The musicians that they put on this list. So please, let, what who is number five? Bieber, Bieber. I gotta admit, disgusting. Bieber put out a new music video on Friday, and by Saturday it had 10 million views. Like only Bieber can get 10 million hits in a day. Only, a day. Only not even Felix Baumgartner's jump from space got that. He got eight million views. Only, f only prepubescent teenage girls consume bad pop music at that gross quantity. I don't think it's bad, but that's another. No discussion. one else is that dumb to spend no, that, their uh, that, that, income on bad music that it, much, except them. It, I think. I think you're just being an Sorry. old grump now. I sound like, like a. Do you grumpy listen? old yeah. Jack Lemmon. If you only made stuff like Bauhaus and, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, The Cure. Um, who's, I who's fandom number four? Come on. But, Lay uh, off. No, but before I was going to say that, I was going <sighs> to say, as you mentioned, teenage fangirls were clicking refresh, refresh, and watching that video over and over again. Yes. Do you think because of the male-oriented cast in The Hobbit and the, the childish nature of the book itself, the, the youthful story of it and how fun it is, and the, the 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 fat jokes and the fart jokes and everything and the cutes the cuties of, of Benedict Cumberbatch and Luke Evans and Richard Armitage uh, and of course Orlando Bloom is back as Legolas. Do you think these fangirls yeah. will they're will, gonna eat it up? They're gonna eat. They it are up. They're totally gonna eat it up. All f all levels of fan base are gonna eat it up because they all want to know Do this primary question: What? has happened to our favorite book that it's What's so going off on? there it's so off teenage girls radar right now that i think once the no. movie comes out people are gonna see oh my god that guy's hot that guy's hot and you know no, places these... like the one ring.net and our even our little chat room for this show i think will be inundated with teenage girls let's go to the next one okay. because the teen girls are supporting hunger games and twilight and the beeb and teenage girls supported Harry see, Potter. A couple years ago, Harry Potter would have been the number one spot, but you can see it's kind of it's kind of dwindling. Um, oh, there's no more Harry Potter. Twilight is number three. There's one more Twilight movie, and then it's done, dead and done. Yeah. And it's not going to be like a vampire. It doesn't live forever. Twilight is a product of the moment. It will, yeah. It will not have any rotating fandom in 75 years. Not like The Hobbit does today. So forget it. Star Wars is number two. Star Wars is number two. This would be unheard of. For the last 30 years, this is unheard of. Star Wars always had the most passionate. The only thing bigger than Star Wars was Star Trek at some point. But instead, they put Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones becomes their first Which number one I don't, fandom. I don't understand. I mean, did they even say 4.2 million Facebook followers? That's because they have a marketing budget specifically for a TV show. That's that, right. That's not organic. Well, I haven't been to Westeros.org in a long time, but they do have some great content. Brotherhood Without Banners. Is that, that's their official website. Main Hangouts is Westeros and Winter yeah. is Coming. Winterscoming.net. I, I, I don't know what they're, they're they're basing basing that on. So you know, Game of Thrones, Star Wars. I think within a couple of years, Lord of the Rings and Hobbit. Middle Earth could be as big as Star Wars if they. No, they can can't branch off the Hobbit fandom. The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit fandom needs to be, you know, considered as one thing. So you know what we. So you know what Lord of the Rings is more popular than. Hunger that's, Games. That's right, and it will continue. It will, it, you know, you think, oh, because movies out, Hunger Games will get more popular. No, the Hobbit yeah. movie is going to destroy the Hunger Games at the box office. Yeah, it will. And also, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit more popular than Gaga fandom. Oh yeah, absolutely. Next fandom, Doctor Who. Doctor, you know, well, we're we're kind of stealing some of Doctor Who's thunder by putting Doctor Who himself, uh, ben, uh, as uh, Radagast, uh, ra yeah. as Radagast on. Yeah. Uh, the eighth Doctor, right? The sixth. I, I, you know, Arrested Development. I was, you know, this is. How I've never, that? I've never seen that show, and I don't get it. I, <laughs> I, I don't understand why it's number ten, top ten fandoms. Come on. 
Uh, Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. I oh, didn't Lordy. understand it, uh, but I do now. Like he has got a passionate following. Joss Whedon is like his own brand, which is crazy. Yeah, that's true. Community. That is the most bizarre thing to have. Community. More stupid popu- TV show. Community is more popular than Star Trek. No, well, it's not possible that the fandom of Star Trek can be downgraded below a recent sitcom that just has a, a cult following. You know, you know uh, there, uh, how there, can that be? There's a Vulture, you're a whack. Wacky website. We, we should try to get Dan Harmon on the show because uh, okay. he's, always, yeah. he's always here at Meltdown. Uh, every month or so he does a, or every week, Dan Harmon, the creator of Community, the, does a, a show anyway. But so, you know, that's kind of the top 15. Uh, and I don't know if I agree with that. And I think Lord of the Rings is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger yeah. as the yeah. movie approaches. So I agree. Well, that's what's going on. So look. What a great show today. Thank follow you, Justin. The One Ring dot net on Facebook, on Twitter, on Stickam. And look at our upgrade. And uh, and why don't we show them this? Except I sent it to you upside down. Is there a way that we can rotate it upside right? No, unfortunately. So it's really? just our web. It's just our logo. But the One Ring dot net is uh, going to have some up visual upgrades. In the coming weeks, oh, as we prepare yeah. for all of the fan excitement of The Hobbit, which is the first of a trilogy of movies, uh, Peter Jackson's directing, and everybody's back, including uh, uh, Andy Serkis as Gollum, and uh, Orlando Bloom, uh, Elijah Wood's back as, as Frodo. The, as, the team from Weta, headed by Richard Taylor, every- bringing their Oscar-winning effects and creature designs to this world. It's going to be amazing. So we're look, look for changes. Uh, anytime a website upgrades its its uh, design and kind of there's always a little bit of like you know oh my god I can't understand like why did you change? People uh, sometimes are are averse to change, but they are this uh, this update to our fan connection um, website. Uh, system the message boards are going to stay put and everything the chat room is going to stay put and the live page which hopefully you're watching um will stay put but uh we're making it so more people can connect with each other without having to have like five different logins and you know oh where do i where do i find out about this event is it on our facebook event page is it on the message boards like we just want to kind of put everything together so um but look for a preview of that in an upcoming show and i think you know, I, I really took they got uh, name wrong. Royd Tolkien's um, uh, uh, recommendation to heart last week. And he, he t- Royd Tolkien told me to read it. And when a Tolkien tells you to read his, his family's book, y- you better read it. So yeah. maybe we can spend uh, the next few episodes uh, reading it. Could you read it to me like I'm five years old? Sure. Or we can take turns reading it or something I'd like that? I'd love to do some we, – we could do some extended reading episodes. It would just, we'd have to do it perhaps as a separate scheduled yeah, time so, than so, well, our weekly show. Well, you know, show. maybe like spend the last half hour of each show just like going through <laughs> the, the, a couple chapters. Because you say it's pretty short. It is, but, you know. So if we spend know, the last 20 or 30 minutes of, of our 90-minute show, we'll get through it in, in by the time the movie's out. No, we wouldn't. No. If we only did 20 or 30 minutes of Hobbit chapter-by-chapter chapter reading, yeah, we wouldn't get through the whole thing by the time... December fourteenth comes. Really? No, we wouldn't. So, uh, how many episodes would it take? It would take. Uh, it would take a few. How, how many episodes? Ninety minute episodes. How long well, would it take to get through the the it, book? All you got to do is look up the unabridged audio book and see how long it is, and then you'll know how long it takes to read it out loud. See. If you want to read it out loud, let's take a look at the audio book and see what the running time is on the audio book. Well, instead book, of then Cliff we'll reading it, so should we just? play the audiobook and then we can pause and comment on what what is happening and and give I'd rather do the reading myself and, and give recommendations of what we think we could. he will expand on we like could. oh this little sentence here no no that this it, is gonna it would be much more organic and expressive if we do it ourselves see it's like torn after dark it's like torn bedtime stories yeah it would just take a few more hours than you think it would it really yeah. well you're the one that you're you and Roy Tolkien are the ones that have been telling me oh you'll get through it in a day it's such a short book da, da, da. well it's you're, so you're easy a quick read. reader aren't you well, uh, so, so, okay. so tell me how, mi- how long would it take well reading something out loud for the effect of storytelling is completely different than the rate at the which you read the audio book is six hours long so that's, that's right that's five episodes that's four episodes yeah for a full hour so and that, that's a lot of reading and is that the abridged version, Stargate Geek? Is that the abridged? And, and the thing is, if you if we read it, oh look, she's here, holding it up to the camera. 
Oh, there it is. So if you read it aloud, we can All take right. the audio, and then we'll just put the audio on the website so people can listen to you read it. Uh, I think it'd be great. Let's do that. I don't know. I it would love to do it. It was just an idea. Because, <coughs> you know, as Alex said, I, I don't read because I can't read, and it's an issue. No, not really. I'm not making fun of, of readers. Uh, I, but I just think it'd be more fun if we if if uh, we did it live rather than me going and reading the book in my little hobbit hole. Yes. Let's let's do this together with with Why everybody. Why don't we? I, that could be super fun. Would you guys want to want to see that? Maybe we ne- spend the next couple episodes. I mean, do you get is that interesting to you guys? You guys, like the movie is about to come out. Let's read it together. Let's read the book together. I think that'd be fantastic. So, um, but that's our show for today. Uh, the Hobbit show, Tolkien Tuesday. Thank Porn you for joining Tuesday. us, guys. That's Cliff Broadway. Mm-hmm. You can reach him at QuickBeam2000. At Quick, you can find me on Twitter at QuickBeam2000. And how about that, uh, Justin? The idea of reading sections of the book out loud as part of the show could, you know, could be an extended exercise. But we could. We should log separate chapters, and each one on our archive be a separate chapter of the book. Actually, I have really should actually to to solve that six-hour issue. Here, let's split it. Let's split the book into thirds, like we think Peter Jackson has split the movies. And let's Ah. see how long. Let's see how long it takes you to read me the portion of the book of up to where we think the first movie will end, because a normal movie is ninety minutes long, hour and a half. Right? Yeah, that's the length of our show. You could watch a movie. Uh, you could watch a Will Ferrell okay, comedy. Okay, that could be an it, interesting so, approach. So, how long do you think it would take to read the first third of the movie? Or the, first, book? The, the first third of the book f- that we know now. Yeah. Because the change in the scroll from Warner Brothers, it goes right up to the chapter out of the frying pan and into, into the, the fire. fire. Right. Well, reading all of that stuff, those first few chapters might take a while. It might take quite a while, but the rest of the book is going to be. You know, just condensed stuff from the the Hobbit. I mean, it will be a few shorter chapters. The third movie itself is only going to be the last couple of chapters, but the, instead yeah, of the, the first seven or eight. Yeah. You see what I mean? It's going to be a very disproportionate thing. So, so literally, I think. Uh, so, you think it will take one episode or two episodes to do the fir- what we think is the first movie? It'll take at least two long, and I mean more than ninety minutes. Long episodes, two of them, so back to back can, to the how first can movie. You, how can everybody, if now that you've said that, how can everybody complain like, oh, how come they're making three movies out of this short little kid's book when you can't even read it to me in the length of a movie? Well, we we don't even know what the running time of the movie is yet. Okay, well, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, so, we'll find out soon enough. So Guys, stay tuned, a fascinating stay tuned idea. till next week. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Uh, uh, lots of exciting things happening. And uh, The Hobbit comes out December 14th in 3D theaters. Hi, Alex. Goodbye, Mirio. night, everybody. Tar, Mirio, and Zanaseb. And Pete, thanks for joining us and being our uh, wonderful moderator again in the Stick Cam chat. Follow me on QuickBeam2000. Follow the net. At the One Ring Net on Twitter and Facebook, come come Dick say and say say hi to us on Facebook and click like and tell your friends to go to our Facebook page and click like and because pick you up the like magazine. It. I know you like it at Barnes and Noble and and how uh, cool is this and Walmart stores Barnes and Noble and Walmart our we tribute edition to the Hobbit special written magazine written by the One Ring. So till next time, we'll see you around. Signing.